how can I be sure if the capacity control is working properly? Now, let's take this from a screw perspective. Most of your screws are going to, well, hmm, I need to actually back that up a little bit. Some screws will be variable speed only. Some screws will be slide valve only. And then you have some, not too many right now, but you have some that are in the middle where you've got a slide and variable speed. So if it's variable speed in terms of capacity control, then what we're going to see is the compressor is going to be fluctuating, which will be quite audible for most of them. Uh, you, you're going to hear the compressor fluctuating in its tone based off of your leaving water. Because what is the whole purpose of a chiller? A chiller has a hydronic evaporator, and our objective is to meet leaving water set point. That is our primary goal. And the purpose of the control panel is to allow the chiller to achieve that goal without destroying itself in the process, right? Or at least intentionally, because like its whole focus and purpose in life is making sure that leaving water set point is achieved at all costs. But the controls will kind of back that off a little bit and say, okay, well, we're pushing this boundary. We've got a high pressure limiting happening right now or a low pressure limiting. We're going to back off a little bit. So we, we don't we want to be able to still make some kind of leaving water, but if you try to make set point right there, you're probably going to break something. So let's not do that. That is the control panels or the, the control system's main function. Allow the equipment to hit that set point without killing itself in the process, ideally. Still happens. How do you know if it's working properly? Well, are you making leaving water set point? Okay, so maybe that's a little bit too rudimentary. If we're dealing with a slide valve scenario, which I think is the one that most people probably struggle with, because variable speed, you're going to hear the tone changing. If it's if you don't hear the compressor speeding up, you've probably got some kind of status on the screen that's going to be communicating you're in a limiting scenario, whether it be suction limiting, uh, high pressure limit, something of that, or current limit. Maybe your your amperage is running at the current limit set point could be fifty percent. 100%, whatever, you're at that limit and you can't stage up any further. Uh, or it's not going to let you stage further because it knows that if it did, something would break. That, I feel, is fairly intuitive. So I'm going to take the approach here that you're probably asking about a slide valve type of control. And how do we know if a slide valve is working properly? And this can be quite tricky. So... The first thing I would ver want you to do is if we adjust the the capacity on the on the compressor, does it fluctuate? So one way to do that, and you want to be able to hear this, right? So as that slide valve is moving, similar to the, the VFD, you should be able to have the audible changes happening. So you could go in and lower the current limiting set point on the chiller or on that particular circuit, depending on your circumstance. So by lowering the current limit, let's say it was at 100%. Let's say you are you were running a current of 80%. But you're trying to verify, is it working? Or maybe you're at 100%. You're at the set point, right? Whatever your set point is. Let me, let me just simplify to that. Whatever your set point is, you're running at that current limit set point. Drop that set point down. You know, and go down significantly, right? You're trying to verify, is this slide working? Okay, so drop that set point significantly. Maybe you go to from 100% to 50 or 60%. If that slide is working, you're going to hear that compressor tones change significantly because you're going to hear it go, okay, then I am way overshooting on my current limit. And I need to back down to get below that safety point so I don't trip off on, on an overcurrent safety. And you're going to hear that tone change. And it, it's, it will cause a leaving water spike if, if everything is operating. So you're going to hear that spike. If you hear that, that's a good, that's a good sign. And, what, and actually what's a better sign is that you actually get that compressor to drop down to or very close to that current limiting set point you know depending on how far you drop it and what the conditions are it 
if you go a little too far, it may struggle to get down quite that far. Just it, it depends, but, um, that'd be one quick way if the compressor is loaded. Now, what you want to see though, is you put that current limit back up and that compressor loads back up to where it was without issue. Now, something to note in this process, if it takes it a while, we're talking several minutes, five, 10 minutes plus to achieve what we're describing here to get from a loaded state to an unloaded state and then back to a loaded state. That's not supposed to happen in this scenario that I'm describing that compressor would load quite quickly and unload quite quickly and it should do it quite smoothly. Um, and so if, if, if that's not happening, well, that could be evidence that the slide itself is not moving freely, or you could have an oil issue or a valve or a uh, solenoid, either coil or valve issue, uh, one of the two. So there could be something mechanically going on there that's not allowing you to adjust that slide appropriately. Um, now, if you're in an unloaded state and you're really trying to get the thing to load up, one, make sure you don't have any other conditions going, right? You're not pushing high pressure. You don't have a low pressure. You're not running up against a current limiting set point. It can be really easy to forget about and overlook those things. I know from experience, you're sitting there scratching your head and like, oh yeah, duh, okay, this is, I, I got this over here, right? So just verify that first. Now let's say those things are not the problem. Um, if you are... If you're trying to get the compressor to load, if you're below leaving water set point or above, I'm sorry, if you're above leaving water set point, meaning you're, you're, you need to stage up, but you're, you're below the high pressure limiting, meaning you're, you, you don't have high pressure. You're not having a low pressure scenario uh, where it's having to, to limit on that. And you're not at your current limiting set point. If those things are true and you don't have any limits preventing the compressor from staging, but yet it acts like it's just not staging up to hit leaving water set point. That's probably an issue back at the slide then. One of the things you can do, some machines will allow you to, like uh, inter, uh, you could force energize the, uh, the loading solenoid. Many times you'll hear these solenoids clicking and you'll hear this constant click sound in the background that constant clicking is probably your your loading solenoid trying to uh, firing the valve trying to get the slide to push open but it's not or i shouldn't say technically open it'd be push to load it which would be more of closing either way it's trying to push the slide but the slide ain't moving because your current limit is staying consistent or barely fluctuating at all or not your current limit your current your RLA percentage, by that point, you're getting into the actual solenoid valves. So there, it, again, it could either be a valve issue where the valves themselves are not working properly or I've had them before Well, they'll be bypassing. So I've had it to where the female un, or the, the, I'm getting off into train there, but the unloader valve will be leaking. And so every time the load valve tries to trigger the compressor will load momentarily and then it will bleed back off because the unload is leaking internally so it just causes this constant load up and then it unloads when it stops calling for the load and then it loads up and it stops and loads up and it backs down that constant fluctuation is a fail for me in that particular case was a failed unloader valve that just needed to be replaced depending on how if your oil uh, levels are correct in the system as well. That will also have an impact on your ability to load and unload. If you do not have adequate oil, because that's usually what we're using, is we're using the oil pressure to push that uh, that slide valve in and to to slide it into a loaded position. So if we do not have adequate pr uh, oil in the system to be able to fill that cavity and put pressure on that slide, then we're not going to be able to move it. So if you're dealing with low oil levels, that would be another thing to try to verify 
is this a problem? One of my favorite ways of doing this is taking uh, solenoid magnets. And what I will do is I'll, I'll disconnect the coils electrically. I know some people like to put the screwdriver through the shaft. I'm not a fan of that because I've had too many fall out and I, I don't like replacing those. So uh, I'll usually disconnect it in the panel and then I'll pull the coils off and then I'll put my magnets on there and I will see how it responds to me manually. And now you have to be careful, okay? Because you now have complete manual control and you can over ramp, you can, you can, you can tear stuff up here. But if you're confident you've got oil and you're trying to maybe troubleshoot your valves and such, this is one way to do that. Uh, you can you can manually put your magnets over the valves you you want to trigger and just do this carefully. Be very mindful of your current. Do not overload your motor in this process, uh, or push yourself into a low pressure, high pressure state. Like it, these things can happen quick. But if you do this carefully, like as you trigger those valves you should hear that compressor adjusting and fluctuating and if that is not happening then yeah you, you've got a you've got a, a slide control issue and it's just a matter of what is the issue right and we've talked about that already oil oil volume in the system a valve problem or the slide itself could be sticking uh, and you can see actually here behind me the uh the puck right here if i can get my right there that is the part that can stick typically you see those little black gaskets and seals there that is what's going to start to get hung up because it's, it's separating sides of the system from the other side we need that seal ability but those seals can also be get wore down and begin to stick okay bad oil and stuff can also cause some of that where it's getting getting in there and depositing uh, just a bunch of trash uh, and that can lead to it starting to get stiff in there and it's not going to slide properly because of that. So just some that, that is from a screw compressor perspective, that is some ways to verify is the compressor actually working properly to help control capacity or not. If you're not already in Chiller Academy, I'd really encourage you to go check it out. Just think about it, right? Uh, this is what I do full time. I, I've, I've committed... I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do and to be able to educate, help others and grow and help this industry take step, steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com, like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's where I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can. Uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you. For all of those that are in the academy, y'all are doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given. 